Okay, Mirage Joker. Let's see, let's see what you do. Not too much info on you so far, so... If we've never played you, it's probably statisti statistically more likely that you may be more uh, on the recreational side. I like that you folded the first few hands. That's good for us. Oh, Jam Jack 5. Not thrill, but yeah. Okay. Jackal 5. Just as requested. Perfect. Didn't need to. One and one will do. Not greedy. All right. And now we're winning. Just like that. Uh, big is it says do you only play flash and stars no no, no i play both but um i think the games have been up until recently they've been pretty decent like uh, we had quite a few uh yeah randoms and recreational so like i'll just play the games which i think are worth playing kind of thing uh, i think it makes sense that way i heard you limp every single button what else is limp maybe your park uh, Legacy of the Cup is, uh, is worrying. Brighton, Villa and Brentford bridging the gap between the top six. Newcastle and Rewell really and the money. Can't imagine Chelsea doing this badly on the potch. Top four is going to be a rip battle. It really will. Like, oof. It's, it's going to be pretty brutal, yeah. Oh, it's a 5x. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This. And then we go back to the hundreds. Is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Jandro says, Team Seven, did you grind other forms poke for spin? Yes, I did, Jandro. I played in order. Double or nothings in 2008. And then I played... So I played like 10 cent games. And then I played... Nine man, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. The very first game I played was nine man sit and goes. Um, and I won my first two, which is probably what was very into me. one dollar game. I was like, oh, here's six dollars, four dollars. I was like, oh, cool, good hourly. Um, oh, it's close, it's super, super, super close. We are dominated sometimes when we lose, miss though. Oh, no cool, and then we're gonna lead some turns. That wasn't one of the turns we were looking to lead, to be honest. This is a pretty awkward spot now. But I might try anyway. It's dicey. But it's difficult to raise here from the button, is what I would say. And so you do get to realize your for free sometimes. Now, jamming here, we definitely want to jam some hands. This would not be one of the bluffs to theoretically take. Do we want to exploit to take this bluff? I don't think so. With the speeder, which he called there, I don't think we're enough folds here. Um, I would take some other hands to bluff. I don't think he folds that hand. Could we have folded flop? Yeah. We were close to folding flop, to be honest, but yeah. 5x. Yeah, would be good, wouldn't it? Oh, sorry. Uh, Jandra wanted to hear the history of my uh, poker. So, um, double on our things. Nine, so, sorry, nine mans, double on our things. Uh, heads up games quite early on in like 2010. Uh, bunch of MTTs. Got really into uh, sit and goes. So, I played a load of. Um, 18 mans, 45 mans, 180 mans. Probably some of you have played those back in the day as well. Um, they used to have these $12 180 mans, which I used to love, and I won quite a few of those. Had a real upswing, I remember, like December 2010 or something, uh, playing 180 man sitting goes. Uh, and then, yeah, when I went full time, I grinded initially sitting goes. Uh, settled sort of on. Uh, then I played, I was an MTT pro for about nine months. I got a few nice scores. Stressful, stressful gig. Uh, and then settled on nine man sitting goes as my bread and butter. Played, grinded that for a good 18 months or so. And then moved to spins 20, or late 2014, I think I played my first spin. And then just was like, well, these are much quicker and better than nine man sitting goes. So I just keep playing them. Uh, and then sit and spin and go since 2014. That was a long story. Sorry, it bored everyone. But just blame Jandro because he they asked. So, uh, King Seven off all our chips. Good luck us. Please have sixes, maybe Ace Four, King Five. I mean, I was not expecting to be ahead there. That's really good for us. How have we chopped that? <laughs> 
Oh, click around the table to make sparks for extra luck. There you go. That's how we do it. Sparks for luck. Mm. Or seven isn't great. But, I mean, delighted when we got king seven, right? All right. Ten, eight, ten. Spade, spade. That's spade. Ah, I wanted to win. Okay. Okay. A button limping has not gone well today, I'll be honest. I heard you limp. Just having Every single flops, button. Like, what else is limp? Maybe your cock. This has been a rare uh, opportunity to limp stab. We get called. Lots of 2x and 7x, like overwhelmingly so as part of their range. I dislike the cool, cool. Very quick call as well. Feels very King X heavy. Could be seven of diamonds. Could be some flush draws. They're not great. Not falling king, not falling flush draw. I guess we check. Oof. Didn't think that would snap call turn. Andy, not a believer. I'm going to keep trying. I feel like it's gone really bad today, but I think it's more of a variance thing, you know? Like, I feel like the idea is good in principle. Oops. Uh, Luke, Scoo, one, two, three. What hands can we limp button at fifteen? Uh, so I've done a lot of work on it before I tried to. It's not like I'm. I know it looks like I'm just playing like an idiot. <laughs> but this is the foundation, at least, is a lot of work, and there's a lot of thought process that actually is going into proof of range. Um, what can you limp? You can obviously limp any two cards. Um, what should you limp? I would honestly suggest don't limp anything. Unless under exceptional situations. Um, but the reason I suggest that is because I think it's it's not even proven that it's necessarily a winning strategy yet. We're trying it. We're trying to see if we can make limping more optimal than min raising with obviously hands that can be min raised. Um, in theory, and again, I don't want to talk too much in detail because it gives away a little bit of the edge, I think. If I talk you know, in depth about, oh, these are the hands I limp and these hands I don't limp and these hands I min raise, these hands I shove, etc., etc. But suffice to say is that, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a different range. Oof, Clark, how wide are you shoving here? Okay, okay, and I that is an interesting fold there. Hey, this is worked out great. Um, that again couldn't have gone much better for us that hand. Again, pretty good fold for us. Uh. The Finland is Mr. F Mrs. or Mrs. Finland or has finished with this game, it seems like. So, Luke Scoo, um, if you're keen, I would certainly recommend trying it uh, and seeing how things go. Um, but uh, I certainly wouldn't go too much wider than just the, like, don't go too, like, wild with, like, Jack-5 off or something. Stick with fundamentally decent hands um, and see how that starts with and then... See if you have a, a, a range of hands that seems to be better or worse, and then adjust from there, and you can sort of slowly build up a button limping range. Also, of course, see how your button, uh, your population responds, because you're going to get some wildly different responses, and it's very important as part of the limit strategy to pay a lot of attention to your opponents and what they're doing, and then think about how you want to adjust to that as well. So, lots to think about. Just uh, played spins like six months for, uh, for a living till pipe poker removed German so Libor, then I switched to Omaha, and since then, five years on your Omaha. I see Clark Kent still plays spins. Uh, you played him, yeah, yeah, I played him. So I played him uh, um, back in the day as well, yeah. At the $15 games. I remember Clark Kent was like one of the top regs at the 15s when I was uh, at that level uh, back in 2015. Hey, good flop for us, ladies and gentlemen. Check. Okay, now Nykook, I was very happy folding in marginal spots. So I don't know, is he really going to fold to a min raise here? All right, not a great turn. I guess we'll jam. God, I, I hope he hasn't got a flush or six, seven, race two or something. Okay. On a non-spade turn, we might check there. Just give him some room to catch up with like a, an ace-king, ace-queen, whatever he had. I'm not sure. 
I felt like maybe his betting range is a bit stronger. I'm not sure though. It's a bit of an assumption that maybe he's wrong. Okay, maybe not. All right, all right, all right. Ace King suited, pretty good, pretty good, pretty, pretty. Ooh. Oh, straight and a flush. Uh, Luke says, I don't play for a living, but low buying. I used to think uh, I ship you fold and it worked out often enough, but that was pocket money compared to these buns. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely, I think, especially at the lowest stakes, uh, you have a lot more room, by the way, against lowest stakes guys, especially to try some of that stuff. I would actually limp more against recreational than I would regs, I think, um, with different hands in different spots. So, like, if the recreational is really, really, like, especially guys that, like, shove a lot of flops, right? I'd limp bases, no problem. Like, if the guy's donk shoving some flops, let's give him an opportunity to donk shove a flop and be like, sure, maybe he wants to run into aces or whatever um yeah i mean which is cool he had five four the other time so i assume he's wide enough hold yeah we held we got a hold we got pocket fives come on clock and one german guy on 15s which uh hit a lot he even jet hit jet oh nice good for him <laughs> Chandra says, uh, Nyko folded 0.8 BB left, but called 50 BB 4 3 off first hand. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think sometimes you're just feeling it, you know, sometimes you just feel like this is going to be the hand I'm going to win. And sometimes you think maybe this won't be the hand I'm going to win. So it's difficult. Uh, Queen 4, Queen 5, I think we're going to call because This is probably shoving correctly. Um, it's a close one. If someone's super tight, you could maybe try and argue for whatever, but yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, let's play again. 